What kind of film is this? I suppose it's the ultimate home movie, complete with lack of plot, lack of interest to almost everybody who was not there. And yet for the butcher, the baker and the candlestick maker, a memory, great shots, great weather, and a chance to relive it. I'm going to drive you crazy before you get out of here, Paul. You are. <laughs> Come on, man. Well, we're doing all right here. We haven't crashed yet. Not yet. Yet being Not the operative yet. word. Not yet. We picked up the boat in Brundle, Swan Boats. I've hired them many times and they are excellent. We decided to take a cruise down to Ulton Broad the first afternoon and it was certainly an enjoyable first day. It was a great way to start the holiday, not a cloud in the sky and really, really enjoying it. Never many boats on the water on Saturday afternoon. And as we went along there, even saluted by people on the side. Moored up in Ulton Broad. Next morning, again, hardly a cloud in the sky. So we walked up and got a newspaper and some bread and milk as usual headed out of Ulton Broad before the Sunday crowd of sailing boats came just came out of Ulton Broad we had a great night and it's a beautiful morning. We had breakfast, the shower, and we're heading all the way up to Horning and maybe run with Broad tonight. Just a beautiful Sunday morning and here we are at uh, St. Olive's, the Bell Inn being the oldest pub on the Broads. And Shortly afterwards, we came into Braden Water, the biggest stretch of water on the Broads. And after that, Great Yarmouth. So we come down one river and then at Great Yarmouth begin to go up another. Going up the Bure now. And uh, getting good, very good shots of the windmills there that were actually used to pump water off the land into the rivers. The Stracy Arms, and uh, just stop off on the way. Had a good trip through Great Yarmouth. And we're going to head up to Horning right now, so it should take another three hours or so. From there we headed then on up the river, the next port of call being Akel and Akel Bridge. Just 
a leisurely time. I love to just sit on the boat watching the world go by. And this is one of the old wherries. And as you can see, there's probably about eight people on there and they're just doing the same as we are. Nice wind that day. If you're going in the right direction, there is. And St. Bennet's Abbey. The Ferry Inn was closed. Apparently went bankrupt. And then we came into the the golden mile of Horning. Beautiful homes here and at this time of the year when the sun is shining it's just really really nice and uh, coming in the new inn there favorite place of people to come and moor up and uh, have a have a drink or a, a snack and then there's Mrs. Grebe with her baby Grebes climbing on her back as usual and we went and had food that night in the pub at Ranworth good day Good day, good photographs, good photographs, Greaves. Ramworth Stade is a favourite place of mine. There's a shop there, great facilities, the Maltsters pub that serves food. And there are nice walks from there through the countryside. Not least, St. Helen's Church, known as the Cathedral of the Broads. Which has a great pipe organ and a 500 year old antiphona written on sheepskin. We climbed the 89 steps to the top and got some of the best views of the broads. Ranworth Dam leading in from the Bure. Malthouse Broad. And to the west of it, Ranworth Broad a wildlife preserve close to pleasure boats. And a nice view of the church and interesting churchyard and a very nice coffee shop there. down the nature trail and back to the boat decided to head back into Horning again as I said this is probably you know this stretch of water is just perhaps the most famous part of the broads and uh, the most scenic I think at Horning I suppose Roxham is the capital of the Broads in that sense, but certainly uh, the, the stretch of river at Horning, culminating at the Swan Inn, is perhaps the most well-known and scenic and photographed. The Stathen Willow is a great place for breakfast. And a uh, 90, 90 degree corner there 
takes us then down past some of the homes and then again a lot of wildlife there we stopped and saw this grebe with three little ones on her back nice photography nice scenery and uh, thoroughly enjoyable and doubly so in that we can uh, enjoy it and also get the the video and photographs of it that uh, enable us to relive the memory as we are doing here. Now we're coming down into Roxham and uh, moored up there. Had a meal at the King's Head actually and then we decided after the meal then headed out and got this great shot of a heron flying through the sunset. And decided that Sal House Broad would be a great place to moor for the evening. So we left Sal House, we're going right now through Roxham Broad and uh, back up to Roxham. Some of the homes here are just, they're just beautiful. So we moored up there. I just came out of Roxham, uh, stopped at Roy's, got some provisions. The weather is absolutely fantastic. We've had three days, there's hardly a cloud in the sky. And I mean, it's just rolling through Roxham now, looking at the houses either side. It is just, I mean, just a pleasure. I mean, this is, this is heaven. Broad's Authority Warden there. This is on the river and overlooking uh, Roxham Broad there. Favourite spot of sailors. Nice winds there. We thought we'd have a look around Great Hofton Nature Trail. The common terns were fishing for their young, some grey lag geese in formation. Typical shot of the broads, the sailing boat there. It was the season for the, the little grebes there, and so we got a lot of good shots of those grebes and I suppose I'm repeating them on the video here, but I'm just uh, enjoying the scenery that we enjoyed. So we came up from Roxham and then came back up to the Horning Mile. Which starts here at the Swan Inn as we turn right. And uh, that wide angle shot giving a good shot of the whole thing there. The Swan Inn was built in the early 1800s. And this wide angle again as we're coming up to the ferry giving a nice overview. I was standing right on top of the boat there. Then we sailed up to Howe Hill, passing through Ludham.
decided to take a little trip on the electric eel. It means that we can go very quietly through these little channels and get great opportunities to see the, the wildlife, the birds, the butterflies, the dragonflies. And the Broads Authority wardens there are very, very helpful and very nice guys. The Eel Catcher's Cottage is now a museum and gives great insight into rural life in times past. I always remember the late Eric Edwards when I visit. He gave great enjoyment to many with his fascinating talks and the driest humour in the wetlands. When I asked the warden in the cottage if there had been any sightings of the swallowtail butterfly, he said they've been seen in the meadow. We were very fortunate to film this rare butterfly, only found here in Britain, and the largest butterfly in Britain. This particular swallowtail is only found here in the whole world. This is perhaps because it needs the, the tall milk parsley plant on which to lay its eggs. It particularly likes to feed on the purple marsh thistle plant. Both milk parsley and the marsh thistle are abundant here. If someone can tell me what the eye there is in the back of its head, I should be grateful. When it flies away, it appears an aphid was sharing the meal. And then Mr. Heron as we I should say Mrs. Heron, as we, as we left, probably a young Heron, that one. Well, next day it was just a, a little uh, dull in the morning, but the sun quickly came out. We got our newspaper, moored up at Sutton that night, and then came over to Stalham here and managed to find a, a mooring place. Always difficult to find there, but we got on Stalham Stave and uh, we were able to see the steam boat there, the small steam boat taking on passengers to just take down the river to Barton Broad. Then we headed past Hunsett Mill to Wayford Bridge having a cup of tea on the way and then on to Dillon. This is a very narrow part of the Broads and it's a nice change. Nature close up so to speak. There's a different feel here and it was very enjoyable then back to Wayford Bridge and saw a moorhen's nest with six eggs just beyond the bridge. And then coming back into Hunsett Mill. And there's the old steamboat that we saw earlier in Stalham passing us as we were getting a snack. This is at Barton Turf. We've just come in to the edge of Barton Broad and moored up actually to take some pictures of, of the, the, uh, the birds there. So from that we came across Barton and this is Ersted now heading back down toward Howe Hill again. Beautiful day. Decided we'd go and get some more shots of the, the swallowtail. They'll come out in the sunshine and just sit on a branch like that in the sun.
And if they'll do that, then it's great because they're still, and it means I can get a very good shot of, of it and also of, uh, this is a very pleasant pheasant. So we then walked around the nature trail there, the Howe Hill nature trail, we walked all the way around it. And this is the, uh, the house at Howe Hill and uh, another shot of uh, Heron and then the swan carrying the young. Apparently uh, when the birds are very small they may be taken by pike. There's some pretty big pike in here three and four feet long and they'll take their young if they're not careful. Well the Thursday it was well it was a dull day but the clouds were very nice and uh, made for some nice shots again. Naturally it's not as pleasant to uh, just motoring along when the sun's not out but fortunately it just kept uh, coming out and by the time we reached up there to St. Bennett's again the sun was on St. Bennett's. Well our final day we're up, up at the northern end of the Broads now at Ranworth, moored there for the night because it means we can get an early start. We don't need too early a start because we need to get down into Great Yarmouth to get slack water. So it would take us about three hours to get down there. So we didn't need to go too early which was just great. Sometimes we have to get off very early. Sometimes uh, we have to even go the day before. We can ride down as on the river as the tide goes out, down to Yarmouth, and then as we're coming into Yarmouth, the, uh, the tide will slow down we'll get slack water there and then the tide coming in will take us up the other river then up to uh, Brundle where we are sailing and broad where we're taking the boat so we just had a little time to look at St. Bennett's Abbey actually because uh, we had we had another hour before we needed to set out we didn't want to get down there too early St. Bennett's Abbey, we're about to head down through past the Stacey Arms to Great Yarmouth, across Braden Water and up to Brundle. It's uh, just 12 o'clock, a few seconds past, and uh, we'll take about three and a half hours. Low water is at 3.20 and slack tide is an hour after that where there's no tide and that's what we'll be aiming for and it's been a great week the weather today is quite nice too but certainly this place here St. Bennett's Abbey is a very very peaceful place and it's been nice to just come and spend half an hour just enjoying the scenery and the place was closed up in 1545 so it uh, certainly is quite an old place. This wall is a thousand years old. Heading now down the river and back 
to Great Yarmouth and you can see all the windmills there. And the Mr. Heron just keeping guard there. And in no time at all we're at Hakel Bridge. Decided to just stop off at the Stacy Arms for a minute and Right, well we just come in coming up to Great Yarmouth and uh, beautiful day. Had a good run, we're gonna get down there just on slack water, go through Braden Water. It's quite cold but the sun is shining, that's keeping us warm and we're having a great time. I like the way they keep these windmills restored. They put the sails back up. Uh, in times past, they were pretty bare, but they've renovated them and they look very nice. So we arrived in Great Yarmouth. It's around one o'clock. And just after, about an hour after low water, so there's very little tide as we Turned the corner now and went into Braden, the biggest stretch of water on the broads. Beautiful day. And then headed up the river toward Brundle and uh, as the sun was setting we got some great really great shots there and yes when I was shooting I did have a graduated filter make the sky a little darker which makes for very nice shots came to Surlingham very small broad tiny entrance but with a lot of wildlife in there and uh, we were able to get some more very nice shots of the wildlife there and uh, Mr. Grebe here tempting the little ones with a, a worm giving mother a rest Always nice shots at this time of the year when those little grebes are sitting on the mother's back. Newcastle United fans. and a beautiful sunset. Last shot. A great holiday. <laughs>